about Matt now. Next up, we've paired low scoring Ruth with high scoring Brian. This person's desk is a pile of shite. It really is. It's um, too much personal stuff around, it's just a clutter. If this is how they're thinking, they've got a big problem. Ah, he's calling Grant. Beautiful. Yeah. Ah, really pleased. Good on you, Brian. This is excellent. He's straight on the phone. He's recognised that Graham's important. It's a cold call. He has no fear. I, I really rate Brian. Brian's going to go a long way, I think. His business is going to do particularly well. He's a terrific guy and he's learning the lessons. But what is Ruth doing? She's not a cup of tea first. She's showing an ability to prioritise. Why she's prioritising a cup of tea you know, isn't clear for us while we're watching it. I try to do the, the easy ones first. Um, at least I know I can get them out of the way. Typically phone calls, you don't know how long it's going to take, so I, I thought I'll leave that to, you know, somewhere in the middle or towards the end. She's got to phone this Graham person. The Graham's a customer. Mm -hmm. um, you, you just got to call them first. Mm. You know, this is why salespeople aren't successful, because they procrastinate on contacting people. She's sorting the cards out now. I mean, you've got to ring Graham. Mm -hmm. Ruth, ring Graham! Because <laughs> <laughs> Graham, Graham might be worth a $20,000 sale to Ruth. Yeah. You know, and, and Graham might be there now, but might not be there tomorrow. So I'd be I'd be uh, on the on the telephone. Brian, according to the profile, is actually very diligent, and he started work immediately on the tasks that he had to do. My strategy was to look through the list, quickly work out which was the best situation, uh, making a cup of tea, a rubbish bin, or putting 35 business cards into alphabetical order can wait. The other stuff is more important. Because he's an organiser at work, he has to organise not just himself, but other people as well. I think this is a really good sign. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think he, he really uh, went straight into the, into the tasks, and, uh, and I think that's a good sign for the future. I think he's going to go well in business. After five minutes, Ruth finally makes the call to Graham, but only manages to complete two out of the ten tasks. After resetting the desk, we're going to compare our highest diligence scorer, Anna, and the lowest, Lisa. I don't bet you I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> yeah. Anna looks different. She looks like she's multitasking. She looks like she's doing things more efficiently. And she certainly seems to be able to focus on task much better. I think it would be tempting to start with the relatively easy ones, like empty the rubbish bin and um, drop the courier package to the front desk. But, uh, you know, those are the kind of ones you can do in very quickly. Um, I've just really pri tried to prioritise what really needs to get done and listening to John, sort of his conversation about um, what you do with your time, now I spend more and more of my time actually just trying to focus on my goals and everything else seems, seems to fit around it. She's going on the internet. <laughs> Was that one of the tasks? What, look for time management techniques on the Google? <laughs> What's she, what's she doing? What's she doing? But what are you, what's she doing? <laughs> she has to send the package, she's opening it. <laughs> Urgently send package. Well, I best open it then. <laughs> well, that is amazing. She wouldn't get a job at NZ Post, would she? <laughs> yeah. It said urgent, so I thought I had to open it. <laughs> is that my out tray or my in tray? I didn't know. So it was sitting there and. Uh, a career pack had to go somewhere. Oh, drop career package to front desk. Oh yeah, I completely, I completely screwed that one. <laughs> screwed the pooch on that one. The irony with Lisa is she's very, very good at what she does. Professionally, they're very talented. And if you engage them as a business person, you'd be very happy with their work. <sighs> There's some work to be done. At the end of the office experiment, we proved that if you're high in conscientiousness, you should know more intuitively what tasks are critical to your success. Luckily, this is a skill we can all learn. Well, John, you've really given them a rude awakening about how much time they're actually spending working towards their success goals. Mark, these people claim they want to be super successful, but they're running around in circles doing the same things that don't lead them towards their goals. Quadrant number two. This is where you want to be spending most of your time. The highest percentage of time should be spent here. The more diligent participants are the ones who should be further along the road to actually changing their actions. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they're the ones who don't make the biggest gains moving towards their success goals. Their goals are absolutely critical. They need to be decisive towards those goals. Bruce, I think it's decision time for you. 
You have to decide whether you want to go to Kenya, grow that business, stay in New Zealand and grow that business with your family, which is very, very important. They want you here and you want to be there. Decision time for you. And as for luck, well, we've seen you grab luck by being open-minded and seizing opportunities to be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Throw away your lucky charm. Unless it's a lottery ticket, you can make your own luck. Next week, the students face their biggest fears on the road to success. I'm not sure I would have done this series if I'd known I was going to be up against these guys. I mean, have you seen their arms? They're like this. I'm going to go home and die. Um, I've never done this before. I don't want to ever do it again. And we reveal who will achieve their multi-million dollar dreams and who will sabotage their own success. You're not convincing me that you're absolutely committed to become a police officer. What? It's not working. Oh my God. I can see where Tony's come from. I think the headmaster's right because you've got to get them in the mindset where it will become permanent. Well, I don't even think the churches have managed to do that over a few thousand years. made with funding from New Zealand on air.